polls close in keenly contested Asin North by election with police launching investigations into pockets of violence, including a shooting incident. How can people come here and be shooting? How, how can people come here and be slapping people left, right, center? We don't want it to get to a point whereby we'll be forced to defend ourselves. If shot into the youth organizer's vehicle, but for God, he would have been a dead man. They attacked the vehicle of the National Communication Officer, Sami Jemfi. We are live in Asin North, where the Electoral Commission is expecting a high voter turnout. If before 12 o'clock, almost all of them had, had more than 50% uh, voter turnout. So we are expecting that by the time we close at 5, the numbers will have increased and possibly go beyond that of the Kumawu election. Top Story with Evans Mensah. And Top Story is always brought to you by Vodafone. Polls have closed in the keenly contested Asin North by election and counting is already underway in some polling stations across the constituency. The Electoral Commission is tonight expecting a high voter turnout and we'll take you live to the constituency shortly. But the elections have suffered pockets of violence, including a shooting incident prompting the General Secretary of the MPP, Justin Kodia Frimpon, to warn they may be forced to defend themselves. From the morning to now, huh? all the stronghold of the MPP, right. there is tension there. There is tension there. You take your time and go from Praso right. to Enja. Look at what is happening there. The tension that is brewing over all these places. Surprisingly, when you go to NDC stronghold, Paso Fingo, the place is quiet. There is no tension there. And we have men in uniform who are supposed to make sure that there's law and order. How can people come here and be shooting? How, how can people come here and be slapping people left, right, center? And lesson that people are going to vote to decide who to be their member of parliament. Right. Does it have to turn into a war? It's an election. People want to intimidate our supporters. People want to scare our supporters from coming out to vote. And that's what is happening. We are expecting the police to do better. We don't want them to get to a point whereby we'll be forced to defend ourselves. Well, the NDC has also been accusing the MPP of being the instigate, that instigators of the violence. Listen to the Deputy General Secretary of the NDC, Musa Fagbandi. We are winning. Despite the violence of the MPP, they've shot into the youth organizer's vehicle, but for God, he would have been a dead man. They attacked the vehicle of the National Communication Officer, Sami Jemfi, destroyed and vandalized his vehicle. They attacked the Deputy Communication Officer's vehicle, Malik Basintali. We will not break the law. We will not be violent, but we will defend ourselves. I, I, I keep on hearing they, they, they. Um, which of the MPP people do you know for which reason you are saying is the MPP? We have given information to the police. I just saw some military officers numbering about six in a vehicle here. I've confronted them. They've bolted. By the time we called for reinforcement, they were nowhere to be found. Simply because in our agreement with the police, we do not have as part of our plans for any joint operation uh, under the circumstances. There could only be a, a joint deployment where they call for reinforcement if the police cannot contain the situation on the ground. You can see how peaceful this exercise has been. There was no room, there was no basis for us to see military officers on this field and that any military officer seen is an imposter. And so the NDC will not break the law. The NDC will not take our brothers for granted, but we will not be intimidated. That I must repeat that the NDC will not be intimidated today, will not be intimidated tomorrow. What happened in Ayawasu, an inch of it will not happen here. We came here in peace, we live here in peace. At the end of the day, whoever wins have won. We will accept the verdict of a transparent election. 
we will accept the verdict that is representing the will of the people. But when we would have to be subjected to any form of intimidation, that will not happen. I am very confident that from the look of things, by 6 p.m., the MPC will retain Honorable Jechikwesin as a member of parliament for a Thank you. Very much. Have you have you reported the matter to the police? We have done so and given them evidence. Well, the NDC reported the incident to the police. We heard from the General Secretary himself, Fifi Kwete, who says he's happy with the conduct of the police so far. I would say largely the police have shown to be very professional uh, in all the places we've been. Uh, there have really not been any major incident. We pick up a few, but we're here to get a confirmation. We've heard, for example, that there is a military officer that has been busted. We picked that news. Uh, yet to get a full confirmation of that. I guess one of your sister stations must have picked it up or something like that. That would be worrying. But then the news is that it's the police that arrested him. So we show that the police clearly is very determined to ensure that the right thing is done. So we hope that continues all the way. We've also been getting an assessment from the Electoral Commission on the ground. We've been speaking to the Director of Electoral Services, uh, Dr. Uh, Surubo Kweku, who tells us that uh, apart from the reported incidents of the shooting and some vandalism, this has been largely peaceful. But for the complaints that we received about some people attacking some vehicles, the police is working on that. I wouldn't want to go into it because I don't have the details. But for those reports, I think it will have been so far very peaceful. Because the issue is that people are going to take decisions, and decisions are through their camp. So there's no need for physical attack on anybody. So to me, I get sad when I hear of violence doing this. But as I said, that is with the police. So for now, I don't have any evidence about anything. But if it is true, then it's of course. I want to take you live now to Asin North, where my colleague Oheming Teria is uh, standing by. Oheming, you've been chasing down this report of the uh, shooting incident and reports that some people may have been injured in the process. What have you managed to confirm? Yes, sir. Even, sir, I can uh, confirm that uh, one of the NDC's uh, agents at the old uh, Praso uh, College uh, Church uh, Polling Centre was uh, assaulted uh, he was attacked and it took the police intervention uh, to uh, save him from that particular situation a while ago he told me that even though uh, despite the attack on him he continued uh, the process uh, to and then he remained the mp the uh, ndc's uh, agent at the uh, polling center here uh, though he now uh, feels uh, uh, there's a headache but for him, the most important thing in his life was to protect the interests of the National Democratic here. Uh, so once uh, the ballots are counted, then he can take care of his personal health. A while ago, I was at the, one of the uh, polling stations uh, here at the Arsene uh, Prasso, and the information I picked from uh, an eyewitness, which was also confirmed by several sources, was that a group of thousandly adult men uh, came uh, to the presence of the uh, polling center and outside the polling center they engaged uh, in some sort of a scuff and one of them uh, pulled a pump action gun uh, shot uh, several times at a gentleman they believe was an NDC sympathizer uh, but unfortunately the, uh, the that is the word they use they say unfortunately the fellas did not penetrate so in as much as the attackers continue uh, to shoot at uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, unidentified NDC supporter, none of the pellets uh, did enter. So it was later on that another group of thousandly built uh, men came to his rescue and he was whisked away. And so the information I picked is that was that the, the, the attack first happened here at the old Paso uh, Calix police station. And it's just a confirmation that I had uh, from uh, Fred Agbenyo, uh, who confirmed, and also I spoke to the NDC's uh, uh, party agent here, uh, who uh, had bruises on his feet, and he says he will go to the hospital uh, after uh, the counting of ballots. I would say just a while ago, the counting process has ended, and the presiding member is about announcing the results. Uh, when the counting uh, ended, it was greeted by uh, a wild applause uh, from 
residents who have gathered here in numbers uh, to, to catch a glimpse of what is happening, perhaps uh, they can be part of history in the Afrin North constituency. That is happening now. The presiding officer is announcing the results, even. And stay with us, uh, uh, Oheming, who is in a simpra. So for us tonight, we'll come to you, give us a sense of uh, what the counting uh, is telling us at this particular uh, polling station. But the police in the last few minutes have issued a statement on these pockets of violence. And my colleague, Maxwell, is in the studio with you. Maxwell, what's the yeah. police saying about these pockets? They said voting progressed um, smoothly this morning, um, but they recorded some incidents, um, including the alleged um, shooting Shooting into the air by someone, they are stating that no vehicle or person has been shot at within the constituency. I'm sure that's in reference to some videos that have been circulating. Um, they say that all the recorded incidents are being investigated, and police have also arrested some suspects who are in custody assisting with um, investigations. Mm -hmm. Okay. They say adequate police personnel have also been deployed throughout the polling centers. Indeed, we, yeah. we can confirm that indeed some individuals have been arrested already by exactly. the police who will try and get yeah. some more clarity. We understand some of them may have been granted bail as well. But yeah. I want to bring in, as uh, so Heming stays with me, uh, because we want to uh, talk to you about also the counting that is already underway across the constituency tonight. I want to bring in uh, the NDC's national uh, youth organizer, uh, Mr. George Parry, who joins us right now on the telephone line from Asin North. Uh, Mr. Parry, thanks for your time here on Top Story. Yeah, good evening, Ivan. How are you? I'm doing great. From what we're hearing, you may have been a victim of some sort of, sort of attack. What happened? Um, Ivan, I don't even know what happened. I had gone round to do my normal monitoring. That's when we're about leaving the polling station. A Toyota Hayes van came to park in front of my vehicle. I, I had one of the guys ask, where is a Pariado? So I turned around, I was on the phone. So I turned around to find out what was happening. And three guys got out of the van. One came straight to the windshield, the other one came to the side of the car while I was seated, and one went behind the car. He used a crowbar to break my windshield. The other one both used a stone to break my glass, the passenger side while I was seated in the front seat. And another one went behind the car. Whatever he used, I didn't see. But what I realized was that the, the, the back windshield was broken. And that is what happened. It was without any provocation. But earlier on in the day, myself and Chief Viney, my former deputy national organizer, had arrested. Okay, so there was a young man dressed in police uniform in Breku, in military uniform in Breku, who was arousing voters. So we drew the attention of the police, and he was arrested. We had followed that arrest to the police station and made sure the young man was detained. I want to believe strongly that it was as a result of that. But some information, my car number was given out to this young man, heavily built young man, who in the theater he is, to be known to be NDC and NPP faithful, and were asked to come and attack me. I also said as a form of intimidation, but unfortunately, they didn't intimidate anybody. They rather emboldened us to work harder for the NDC. And I can confidently tell you that the results that are trickling in, then it is clearly the leader we are winning this election. I see we'll come to the elections and its uh, potential outcome very shortly. And I believe this was reported to the police? Yes, I, I went to the police command to lodge a complaint. And so we saw some of them. We even got phone numbers and other things. So clearly um, we are hoping the police is going to pick them up and then deal with their match. The police have done a wonderful job with this process for the first time. You've seen proper professionals who are the part of the police. And I commend them for what they've been able to do. In fact, uh, we've seen that statement and the uh, Dampari himself, the IGP, is on the ground ensuring that this indeed is handled professionally. And you've confirmed that. In fact, your general secretary also did exactly that. Now, talking about uh, polls, polls have closed. You saying already that uh, you're winning and you're in a lead? Um, I can tell you for free that it's going to be a long flight. Literally. The results that are coming in are very encouraging. I believe by 6.30 p.m., we should be able to put out our results and we should be calling our results for Jackie Grayson. He's going to retain the seat as a member of parliament for the good people of our mouth. And, and you, you're certain this is not another we are in a comfortable lead moment? No, this is not a comfortable lead moment. Results that are coming in so far, so far I've seen at least 20 polling stations and the indications are very clear. We benchmarked them and compared them to our previous results in previous elections. But clearly, clearly, that situation is going to carry the day. And you say this is going to be a landslide? 
of course, this is going to be a landslide. Thank you very much. That's uh, the NDC's uh, National Youth Organizer there. Let me go back to my uh, colleague on the ground, Ohimin Teria, who is on the line with me. Ohimin, uh, you are the polling station right now. Uh, tell us what's happening there. That uh, polling station uh, may have finished counting. You've given us a sense of what the outcome there is. Hello, Ohimin. Do we have Ohimin on the telephone line? Hello, Ohimin is with me there on the ground. Ohimin, can you hear me? Okay, we don't have Ohimeng's uh, attention right now. We'll try and bring in uh, also Kudunyako, who is also there for us uh, tonight to give us a sense of what is happening as far as the counting is concerned. You've already heard from the uh, the National Youth Organizer of the NDC saying already that they, they, they've seen results from more than 20 polling stations and they believe that uh, they are in a comfortable lead and winning. Kudunyako is joining me right now. He's at the, uh, the Constituency Collation Center. Uh, and, and Kojo, what can you report from that center? Well, so Evans, uh, the results are trickling in very thick and fast. Um, and I have two of them now, and Charles Opoku is leading. So at the Methodist Primary B, uh, Charles Opoku polled 209 votes. As again, 201 votes for Joe Dachi At the Catholic Primary School B, uh, Charles Opoku polled 172 votes. As against Charles, um, uh, James Jackie Quayson, who managed 144. But the NDC uh, supporters here are jubilating. Uh, they are jubilating for the fact that they say that the margins are not too high. They are limited. They are, they are, they are very small. And so they, have, they still have the hope and confidence that uh, George Jackie Quayson will be able to win uh, the election um, when the eventual declaration is done by the Electoral Commission. So, um, both supporters, but the MPP is a bit restrained, while the NDC is, I mean, is on, on wild. I mean, they are tooting their horns, they are blowing Guguzela and all of that, all of that. So, uh, we await for the outcome of the other polling centres that are dotted around us. Just confirming again, the, the, the group jubilating is the NDC. So uh, let me let me let me run by you. Um, Methodist Primary B, uh, Charles Opoku polled 209 votes. As again, Joe Dachi Kwesin, who polled 201. At the Catholic Primary B polling center, Charles Opoku polled 172 votes. As again, 144 uh, by Joe Dachi Kwesin. And you were telling us earlier that as far as jubilation is concerned, the NDC group seemed to be very jubilant. Interestingly, see, so uh, the NDC uh, is a party that has started jubilating. In fact, they have gathered here and there is, they, they have brought some brass bands and they are dancing to it. I do not know the dynamics uh, for which they have started jubilating very early, but for the two police stations that I have confirmed that the declaration has been done at the polling centers. It is Charles Opoku that is winning. But they see that the margin is very slim for Charles Opoku to succeed in beating J George Achipesi. You are at the Constituency Collation Center. This is where all the 99 uh, polling centers will bring their results for final collation. Is the place ready? To receive all these uh, polling station results, and I can hear in the background people already jubilating and singing and chanting. Yeah, so so they are singing and chanting, oh yeah yeah yeah, okay, Simbeba, and that is the kind of chant they are doing currently. But the 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 constituency uh, collation center is getting set now that the polling centers dotted around us, uh, they are almost done with uh, the declaration of the results at the polling station level. They will now move to the uh, collation, the constituency collation center, to begin the collation because it is now that some of the results will be coming from the hinterland. In fact, there were places that were almost inaccessible. They had to go there with some tricycles in order to deliver the election materials. And so we are in for a long haul. Uh, the day is not very young as far as this by election is concerned, and we will be here to give you up to the minute details here of the happenings at Asen, um, Asen North constituency. And Kojo, you've been talking to the Electoral Commission, you've been talking to the 
uh, Director of Electoral Services, earlier in the course of the day, there were reports of vote buying and attempts to induce voters. You got a reaction well, from so when uh, we spoke to the Director of um, Elections, uh, he indicated that um, what he indicated actually was a high turnout they are expecting. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about Dr. Shibuo Kweku, who indicated that um, from how things are panning out, uh, this place would be one of the places that they will witness high level of voter turnout as far as he is concerned. Because where he went, and at the time he went, and the number of people that had voted, he feels that things have been done very well. And then the interest that has been generated around this by election um, has really gone very well. And, and this is Sir Bokwaku talking about, you know, that concern you guys put to him as far as the uh, vote buying concerns today uh, are concerned. These are infractions of the laws. So if somebody is going contrary to the law, the person should be reported to the police. Because if the police don't have the broth, we are, we are, we are a broth with the power to investigate and the rest. If we report to the electoral committee, we can't do anything about it because that is not our work. So once, once that infraction is happening, if you inform us and you have evidence, we can help you to report to the police. But the ideal thing is that once that is happening, you report to the police, or if they need to arrest, they will arrest and do the native investigation so that if they can establish the truth or otherwise of them. Well, we're talking about uh, the issue with vote buying, uh, the a strong team of coalition of, uh, co uh, coalition of domestic election observers, uh, Kodeo observers, are on the ground right now uh, monitoring and gathering uh, evidence uh, as far as these allegations are concerned, as far as those they can actually confirm, and also monitoring uh, the elections. We'll get your thoughts uh, if you stay with us here on your election headquarters. And uh, could you tell me, you've been talking to the Electoral Commission uh, what's your estimation as far as bringing this whole process to closure? When do they estimate we will get to know the final results? Well, so from uh, their account, now that everything is almost ready and the coalition center is set, um, as soon as the results from uh, the villages, those places that are very far, but those that are very close to the highway, uh, the results are almost ready because from the five polling centers that are dotted around me currently, uh, the declarations have been made at the polling center level. It's left with for the results to get to the collation center where the actual collation of the results from these polling centers uh, would begin. So they are estimated, they are estimating that by eight o'clock, uh, they would be inching closer to declaration if the declaration or all the results have even come in by then. And you've been moving from one polling station to the other. Give me your own assessment. Now that polls have closed, results from uh, polling stations coming in. Um, we've had the report, the disturbances, allegations of vote buying. What has been your own assessment of, of what you've seen? Well, this is a now? unique situation as far as this um, by-election is concerned. The accusation started very early where they started pointing fingers at a particular building where uh, some supporters perceived to be NDC were pointing their hands to a particular building where they suspected that the MPP had agents in and were sharing money. And so it led to some heated exchanges. And at a point, uh, some people exchanged blows uh, here. And I witnessed the blows. Uh, it was an interesting spectacle to behold. So that prompted the police to get to that particular building. And then when they went there, we did not really get any any reasonable outcome out of that one. We don't know whether they went to meet such persons there or they met them, and there was nothing like as complaints. But we, there have been, I mean, these accusations. So um, I saw uh, one um, individual from the MPP accusing precisely the regional secretary or central regional secretary of the MPP uh, mentioning some names of people he saw doing his rounds doling out money, dishing out money to some people, and he said that he is calling their names out. But for the NDC, they are unable to put names to the people Customers they alleged like were, um, were vote buying or were giving money to people to induce them in order to vote for the NDC. And so that has been the situation here. But it, it's also another interesting spectacle that after voting, this place has been filled 
uh, with the crowd of supporters from both parties. They never departed this place after voting. In fact, there are a number of media houses that have surrounded here, and they've been cheering their political figures uh, up. When George Achikwesi came out, uh, draped in white, all white attire, you saw the crowd. They milled through uh, the way, and then he went to vote. And then when he exited, it was like another mammoth rally, a float of a sort. They milled through the principal street that this is the man they want to retain as the MP for this area. But for currently, what is happening, um, it, it, it's fascinating because uh, three of the polling centers that I am aware of, um, Charles Ufoku has won, but the N- it is the NBC su- supporters that are currently jubilating. So I think they may have, they, they may know something that we are not aware of. And so we get the nitty gritty of why they are jubilating, and then we'll give you up to the minute details. Thank you very much, Richard Kujunia. When earlier when we spoke to the uh, National Youth Organizer, he also sounded that same uh, word of optimism that they are in a comfortable lead. Uh, we yet to hear from the NPP side. A lot of them uh, very, very busy right now and unable to come to the phone uh, at the moment. But we'll get their own reaction uh, for you here on your election headquarters. <laughs> I want to stay with us here on your election headquarters. Newsnight is focused exclusively on the Asin North by elections as uh, counting is currently underway. You want to join us uh, for our converged coverage here on your election headquarters from 7, uh, where we bring you that result show. And then we have the post. Uh, election analysis show uh, where Winston will join me also all the way uh, from 7 uh, till we get the results and break it down for you. Stay with us here on your election headquarters. You ever-